All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Um, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Colleen DeLang. I have been on staff uh, with my real source for, gosh, a little over eight years, I think is when I uh, started, and also a licensed realtor for over 20. Makes me feel old when I say that. Um, and uh, I'm excited to be here with you talking about working remotely, doing virtual property showings and virtual open houses. Taylor, did you already introduce yourself? I have not. I was just letting everybody know to hang on a couple minutes. It was still going on. We were just trying to get you on. So uh, you. good afternoon, everyone. My name is Taylor. I will be uh, chiming in a little here and there with Colleen and going over um, some options you have with coaching your sellers and virtual open houses. Awesome. And then we've got two other distinguished uh, people on our panel. We have Dave DeReese, our CEO. Dave, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. And we also have Chris Van Bell. Chris, you want to introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. I'm going to be uh, taking care of questions today. Uh, if you use your little question box, uh, I'll interrupt at uh, appropriate times and uh, we'll get all these questions answered. I love it. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we are here to really show you some time-saving tips and techniques in working uh, remotely, obviously with the uh, governor's order. Um, we're all having to do business uh, differently than we previously did. We're having to find ways to work with homeowners, to obtain property photos, what you need to know about that. Um, and uh, when you get the footage from the homeowners, what do you do with it? What do you need to legally protect yourself so that you can be working with someone else's photos? And actually, Taylor, it's perfect that you uh, do this class because nobody knows more about photos and our photo field trips and our great photo classes than you. So it's fun when I get to do this with you. Yeah, I like that we've gotten the, we've been able to teach so many classes together lately. It's been it's been a while. It's fun collaborating on classes. So hopefully you guys are able to take a lot away um, with you know how we can run business right now, as well as in the future that some of these tips will be uh, beneficial for you and maybe some online strategies and managing your listings in uh, for virtual open houses in the future as well. I love it. Um, so first we said we were going to start off and we were going to take a look at our market monitor for each class. I'm just going to go ahead and take everything out here. So we're looking at a nice blank slate. Um, a lot of people are saying, well, you know what? I think I'm going to join a book club. I don't think I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, because I can't go show a house, I'm not going to be able to create any business. And that's quite honestly just not true. If we take a look at our market monitor, there's a lot of people still doing business. As a matter of fact, five in the last three days, 564 new listings went into the MLS. Uh, as a matter of fact, 498 properties went pending, 266 saw a price change, and we recently, uh, matter of fact, just yesterday, we made some changes to this market monitor. So if you wanna know uh, how much business is actually being done, go into your market monitor, put, you know, I wanna see what's going on one day back, hit your refresh button, and you're gonna see the numbers for yourself. Just in the last day, you can see 235 listings went into the MLS. So the real choice we have to make right now is a mental one. Are you going to sit on the sidelines and say you can't do business, or are you going to reinvent how you're doing business and do it remotely. I truly don't believe that uh, you know in the next uh, few days that all of this is going to be over. I think some sellers are still gonna be nervous about having a lot of people through their homes. I think there's gonna be changes in the way open houses are going to be done. And quite honestly, um, virtual open houses have been so popular in California and New York for so long. And, you know, they have certain apps for doing it and they're, they're doing it from their homes and they've been doing it a long time. And I think we are now going to catch up uh, to that. We're going to see more people doing virtual showings, virtual open houses right from their own homes. Um, so now that we can't get in our car and drive to a seller's home, how do we still get people to look at it? How do we still promote it? How do we um, utilize the tools we already have in place to get more exposure um, you know, to those listings? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I think Taylor is going to uh, start us off uh, she's going to talk a little bit about the great techniques uh, that she's put into place 
to help coach your sellers on taking the photos, on getting the photos to you, what you need to know legally. And quite honestly, I think you're one of the best people to cover this, Taylor. Before, well, we, go, before we go too much further, I haven't seen any questions or any comments. Is is it possible that they're not hearing us or can we have somebody say if they can hear us through the questions or the we've comments? Had some, we've had some questions coming through, but um, nothing about, it was a little earlier. So yeah, can everybody hear and see Colleen's um, and myself? Looks like when, yes. When can she can hear us. Yes, yes. Okay. Yep, looks like a lot of people yep. can. Get lots of yeses. All right, awesome. great. Thank you, everyone. Just got a good good thing to double check, especially okay, since we had a little bit Chris, of a up this Chris, Chris will have to watch the questions because I'm not seeing any questions. Okay. okay, I have been and I've been responding to most of the ones about the uh, hearing and we're getting a, a good yes. And then Debbie just said she doesn't see webcams, but I don't think you guys have them on. No, we didn't. Nope, we didn't turn on. Um, Dave, I can actually, let me see if I can make you a presenter so you can help answer or see the questions at least. I, I just did that. He should be seeing them right now. Okay, cool. Are you All seeing right, well, that I'm going to take over on the screen if that's okay, Colleen. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah, I can see him now. Okay, great. All right, so as Colleen mentioned, I'm gonna kind of get started with um, photos and tours and things that you can do to uh, coach your sellers and what are some of the options available. Um, first and foremost, a lot of people just wonder, how do I get the photos from my seller? Or how do I, what do I tell the seller to use to get photos to me um, or video tours to me? So. Uh, you're sending over 30 plus photos of high resolution and a couple minute tour video, which I'll be showing you some options that you have there. Um, what's the best way to do it? Because I can't just send it through a text message or I can't always just do an email. So um, we have a couple options for you. One is called Google Drive. If you haven't used Google Drive before, um, I, I strongly recommend it. I love using it. Um, I've worked with other photographers who also use it. And what's really nice is as long as you have a, a Gmail email and your client has a Gmail email, particularly as long as your client has a Gmail email, you can they can go into drive.google.com. And what they can do is they can actually add folders. And then when they add a folder, I have one, two, three Main Street here and created. They can open that up and they can simply upload more photos into this and share that link with you. So they can drag and drop their photos or their tour video in here, or they can go to this new button over here and hit new uh, file upload. And then that's where they can grab their photos from their computer, upload that video, upload those photos. And then once they have put them into their Google Drive, they can simply go to the folder up here at the top and they can share that folder with you or text you the shareable link. And then that, that will be emailed to you or texted to you or however they decide to send you the link. And you can open that up and you can see all their photos and download them uh, right on your computer. Another thing that's really nice that I like to use um, I use this one more personally, is the WhatsApp. And the WhatsApp is nice because you can download this app on your phone and your seller can download the app on their phone. They can do their quick tour of their home and they can send it from their phone right to your phone. And there's um, no extra steps to like uploading into Google Drive or having to use a computer or anything like that. So. If they just want to send you that video tour directly from their phone right to your phone without compromising any quality um, or maybe it's too long just to send through a text message, you can do use WhatsApp for that. Two really good products um, for communicating the photos and the, the um, video tour between you and your seller. Another one that's really popular um, I've used it, but I prefer these two over uh, Dropbox, but Dropbox is another one that a lot of people use. You can have a free account and sign up um, and do it works very similar to Google Drive in a lot of ways. Um, so 
when you're coaching your your sellers, um, first they just need to know that how to get those photos and videos to you. So these are a couple options for you. Next is what should they do to their photos and videos to get the best possible uh, quality to you? They're not doing this regularly because they don't get listings and they're not taking pictures. They don't always know what to take pictures of. So uh, what I created for you guys here is a handout. I think you should be seeing it is your um is a as a photo checklist so this is something that will be beneficial for you to use moving forward to provide for your sellers but definitely something you want to be using now um just to make sure that before they take photos it's photo ready and sometimes these are little things that a lot of people don't think about and especially right now when we're not leaving our house and it's um your, your house basically isn't getting a break to stay clean so if they are um wanting to take pictures and they clean up their house there's a couple things in here that they might overlook especially if they um haven't taken pictures before or um you know they think the house is clean but there could be a few things that are distracting that they're not used to removing um so this is a way to give them some confidence coach them tell them to follow this the best that they can as well as moving forward once all of this is lifted, this is something that will be really great for you to provide to your seller to save you time and um, be able to take the most efficient and better quality photos. So really simple stuff that can be easily, easily overlooked besides just having a cleaned up house, such as removing your cords and chargers from your plugs, um, like out in the kitchen. A lot of times people have their um, Alexa plugged in or their phone chargers, um, laptop chargers kind of plugged in in the living room behind the couch. I know I do. I always have cords and stuff all over. So little things like that that can really take away that quality of the photo that maybe you you already do when you take pictures, but as a seller, they don't think about that necessarily. And a lot of times, um, some of the feedback we've heard is, you know, maybe sometimes the sellers want to wait, they're not sure, they, they need that confidence to know that there's options for them and what to do. And you have this plan in place from getting photos from A to B to what you need to do to take photos and what you need to do to take to, um, to take a tour. So look over this uh, check sheet or this checklist for, um, for future reference, but also something to provide to the seller and give them that confidence to be able to take the best possible photos. Another thing that I recommend uh, letting them know and also doing moving forward if you haven't taken my photo class is the time of day is really important when taking your pictures. Um, so I'm gonna pull up a sample listing real quick that I have <clears throat> just to kind of show you an example of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Now, we can't have professional photographers come out. We can't have, you guys can't go out to their listings and take to their um, homes and take photos because you're so used to doing it regularly. So what do they need to do? Well, they want to still get the best possible photos. They still want to market the pop property in the best possible way. So time of day is really important too to let them know in terms of taking that primary photo. So the primary photo, if it's um, an east facing home, it's really helpful to take that in the morning, about one or two hours after sunrise. And that's because the sun is lower in the sky. And what it's doing is it's shining on the front of the home. And because it's lower in the sky, you're able to get more detail in the blue, blue sky and clouds versus it being all gray and washed out. Even on cloudy, gloomy days, as long as the sun is lower in the sky when you take that picture, you're able to get some of that contrast. Um, so for a west-facing home, it would be the opposite. It would be the evening. And then for a north or south-facing home, you kind of have the flexibility of morning or evening, where at least the sun is shining um, lower in the sky, um, where east and west, it's going to be directly beaming on the house. But just know you want to take a picture with north and south facing homes when the sun is lower in the sky. 
Um, and then the primary, once the primary photo is complete, they're gonna wanna do their um, interior shots. So some recommendations that I have for an interior shot is always starting with some sort of entrance. So for this sample listing that I'm showing you guys, this is a mudroom. I chose the mudroom um, because it was something that was really nice about this home. Now a foyer, an entryway, if they don't have a mudroom, of course, but this is up, up, to your, um, up to you how you wanna put this in the MLS. And then it needs to go, then they need to go to another main living space. So a couple different shots. So the living room or the kitchen, whatever is closest to whatever entrance that you chose. And then I like to mix up some close, couple different angles of each room and then some close up shots of something that maybe is a nice feature to the home. So uh, besides the checklist of little things that they can do for staging, these are some tips for taking photos. They're gonna start with the entrance, they're gonna do multiple different angles of each room, and a few close-up shots of some nice features of the home if they would like, and then send those to you through WhatsApp or Google Drive or Dropbox, um, and then you can upload them into Paragon. Now, um, another thing that's really important in terms of taking interior photos to let your seller know is midday is really good for taking your interior photos. And you wanna take your photos midday um, for those interior shots because the sun actually is high in the sky and isn't coming in too harshly in those windows. And when the sun is beaming in, if it's an east facing home, like this house that you are seeing right now, the front of the home, I think I took this primary photo Go back it was probably like 8 30 in the morning so it wasn't super super early but it was still pretty early um and if you see there's a lot of sun shining in these big pretty windows right here so if i were to go into right then and there and start taking pictures in the dining room that was right here and the um little sitting room that was over here i would be struggling to get a really good balance between the window detail and the um, interior shot. So midday is really helpful. So let them know that before they take their inside photos to take them around noon, one o'clock. And a couple different angles of each room, like I mentioned. And one thing that I like to do before I take pictures um, and talk about in my photo class is there um it's called continuity it's a technique but basically it's little teasers of what's to come next so we led in from the kitchen to the living room I'm doing a couple different angles of the living room here you see the staircase and now we go up the staircase and we're shooting from a different angle and you see these rooms over here and then that now takes you into those rooms and me as the agent use the captions and descriptions to describe what they're seeing. I cannot stress how Colleen's gonna go in a little deeper to captions and descriptions, um, unless you want me to kind of go over that now, Colleen, I don't, I don't mind, but um, using your captions and descriptions is really important because if they are not able to see the property, then this is, your tours and your open houses and your captions and descriptions are really what you have to sell and kind of explain how the, the house is pieced together. Sure, Taylor, if you wanna go into it right, right now while you're there, that's awesome, that's great. Okay, okay. So I'll show you guys the captions and descriptions and a couple um, ways that I use the descriptions that sets that um, tone and that story for the house. So once I uploaded my photos, you can upload 69 photos at a time. The load, you can rearrange them after the fact. So rearrange them in that order that I suggested um, from entrance to main room, cover that main floor and main living spaces, couple close-up shots, then your bedrooms, the bathroom that goes with each bedroom, make your way to the basement or outside, and have a nice, um, you know, full circle experience. Once your photos are in the right order, 
you can choose this little red pen. Don't worry if your photos are upside down. You don't need to do that outside of Paragon or anything. If they send over, if they're taking pictures on their phone, sometimes the orientation um, on your phone can get confused depending on how they're holding it. So especially if the sellers are doing it, don't give them one extra step. Save you guys the step. You can actually change the orientation within Paragon. You can crop as well, and then you can add captions and descriptions. So the the label would be the or the caption would be the name of the room, and then your description. You have 255 characters to promote this specific part of the home, or use it to kind of tell them where it is in relation to other rooms to give them that little story that maybe they weren't fully able to piece together because they aren't at the property yet. So for this um, captions and description section, I think I'm gonna show you it, how it works with the photos so it looks it's a little more effective. So here's the mudroom shot, an extremely useful mudroom with custom built-in benches, hangers for backpacks, purses, briefcases, and more a little office space for bills and receipts, allowing your kitchen counters to be free of clutter, as well as a large walk-in pantry and coat closet. Now, descriptions are important, of course, more than just during this working from home or um, uh, stay at home order and working remotely. You're gonna still wanna do this moving forward if you aren't using it because this, um, Photos are the first thing that people click on. So you're using the photos as a way to kind of tell them a little bit even what's in the report that they might overlook, um, as well as kind of telling that story. Here's an example back here of where I explained how the, the flow of the house is. So a view of the mudroom from the large open kitchen. The mudroom is attached to the three car garage. Now here's that storytelling to kind of let them imagine living here. Wouldn't you love to cook a delicious meal here? A beautiful, fully updated kitchen with tons of counter space and soft closed cabinets. Something that might be in the report or the remarks, but make it easy for them to see these benefits of the home by using your descriptions and mentioning all of the, you know, soft closed cabinets, things like that. A different angle I did here. Um, to show the appliances that maybe weren't in the shot. So that's why different angles are important. Um, and I wanna get to a couple examples where I talked about how <clears throat> you're setting that, that story of where everything is. So check out the matching hardwood floors and uh, staircase railings, creating a, co a cohesive look and feel. Then a uh, home office on main level near living room, a nice space to read, relax, or work from home. And then right here, it said home office that's connected to the short hallway and half bathroom. And then now we lead into the, the nice half bathroom. Okay, so little things like that that you as the agent can do to really promote that property. Um, one, you know, take it one step further because they um, need as much information right now as they can possibly get. Now, once you have the photos and the videos, or even actually before you even get the photos and videos, one thing that uh, we strongly recommend that you do is make sure that you get the copyrights to the photos and the video ahead of time. So the copyrights are gonna allow you to have ownership of these photos, which is important because these photos are used in a lot of different ways from um, where your, your brokerage, your franchises, the MLS um, syndication, they're all sent out. So you wanna make sure that you have those rights signed over because whoever clicks the shutter technically owns the photos in the uh, eyes of the law. So 
what we have available for you before they take the photos, before they take the tours, have this um, alternative copyright agreement or joint ownership is what we've labeled it here too, signed. Um, you can have, there's also, this is also an Instanet, something that you can put as part of the listing package. One page, really easy to understand uh, document that they can just sign through, um, through Instanet and make sure that you have ownership, but it's also joint ownership. So that's why it's such a really easy and under, um, easy and just, uh, yeah, pretty much easy and uh, I don't even know what the word would be, I'm blanking out, but an easy process because nobody's gonna worry about who owns the photos because the seller owns them just as equally as you do. So they can still use them if they need to moving forward as well as, um, or still have them for something that they wanted personally to use. You can't go after them, they can't go after you. So this is the first thing you're gonna do. Then they're gonna take the pictures, follow the checklist, some of these suggestions that I've given you, send the photos to you through Google Drive, WhatsApp, you upload them into Paragon, make sure you do your captions and your descriptions, and everything is on, will be on the right track for you. Um, Colleen, is there anything that you wanna chime in about the captions and descriptions or anything like that? No, I thought you did a, a great job showing it, and uh, I love all your photos. It's it's great. I can always tell the ones you've taken; they're always so crisp and clear. And, <laughs> and I love the sink shot. That's like your trademark shot from your yeah. class. So. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the double sinks and the the farm sinks. I have to take pictures of them. It's very cool. Um, and you know what you know what I've done, and I encourage any brokers who are on the call put that photo copyright form right in your package, whether you're using uh, zip form or whether you're using transaction desk or uh, even in command, um, the, a lot of those uh, forms have already been added to your listing package. So what I do is I, when I'm sending over my seller's disclosure to find out about the property for the seller, I include that copyright form. And that way, when I get that copyright uh, form signed back, now I want them to send me um, the, you know, the photos and, and the tour. So um, don't be afraid to have them electronically signed. And you, you can bring that, it's just a PDF, and you can bring that into any of the transactional form platforms. Are there any questions to address before I move on to uh, the virtual tour options available? I've got nothing so far. Okay, all right. Well, then that means I covered everything in detail then, I would assume. <laughs> so um, in terms of a tour, we talked about sending it through their phone, through WhatsApp. What do you do with that? tour from there. Colleen's going to go into a little bit more detail on what you do with that video file, but I'm going to show you something that is available for you in Paragon. Um, once you have that link created, you can go into um, your listing. Oh, of course, I closed out of my listing. Hang on one second. Open up my listing. And we have a special four fields under compensation and tours right here. Now these four fields are available for you to add any kind of video tour, or video promotion that you've created for the property. So because you're, we're not, everything is working from home right now because you can't have showings, real in-person showings, um, you can do a tour, have your seller record a tour, which I'll have a, a, the sample of what Colleen did, which was really great, um, and place that tour in these fields. So virtual tour field or video tour field. Now you'll see that there's a branded option too. Now, and why are why is there so many different options? So branded would be where you're introducing yourself, the agent, um, recognizing your brokerage, you could have some logos, all that kind of stuff on the video, where the 
non-listed branded, which would be considered unbranded, is just the property. That's what goes out through Collab Center, um, any of the auto emails, IDX, uh, our single, I think the single property website also pulls that and the, and the branded. So you will be able to um, definitely want to do the unbranded as a priority first so that people can watch these tours um, similar to like a showing. And I'm going to pull up one of Colleen's properties that she did, this exact thing. There it is. And you'll see that she has video tour and virtual tour. I think it's the same link that you put in, right, Colleen? Just to use both placeholders. Hello, everyone. Actually, I did one in YouTube and I did one the circle. Uh, yeah, no, I did. Yes, they were both YouTube. Yep. Yep. No, but you, you, you would you would want them to be different if you can. If, Right. If you have yeah. uh, two different ones that are unbranded, you want to put them, don't put the same one in, in other words. It's, it's yeah. designed so there's to like a slideshow, Colleen, you, you had like a circle pick slideshow that was done right. um, or an aerial video that was done. You have all these different options in there from branded to unbranded of different types of promotional videos that you can put in. Um, because everything is so restricted right now, we just are really showing the tour options so that you can get an idea of what your seller is able to do um, as a tour and some tips. So Colleen did this video before the um, before the stay in home order was put into place. And all she does is just, you know, she's the agent, but she's not saying her name. She's not promoting her prop, um, her brokerage or anything. But she is just saying hi and welcome, and we're going to go check out um, Marsha, this property on Marsha Lane. But what you guys can do is you can have your seller start right at the entrance of the home, show the front of the home, have them walk in, and we're going to um, go through some of the things that Colleen did really nicely here on the property. Like set. Not pickleball. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Okay. Want to take darn commercials? Just stop. <laughs> All right. Stepping inside here, we have an entrance to the one and a half car garage. We walk right into the living room. It does have a gas fireplace, and then just off to the left, we have a full first floor bathroom. And then just over here, we have a dining room just off the kitchen. It's very neutral decor. Just outside, you have a spacious deck. And right beyond those trees is Lake St. Clair. As you can see, you have no neighbors to the left as it's an end unit. And we've got a nice spacious sitting area. And it's very quiet and private here. So what Colleen did is she started at the entrance and you can see that she showed the whole entrance and the first room that connected to that was the half bathroom. So just kind of naturally how you would walk through the home anyways. So what she did here is she just she just sort of panned each room. So I recommend that that's exactly what your sellers do. They walk in to the main space show whatever room they're in by panning slowly, taking it back, whatever room connects, show that. They can they can say what room they're in, but you do want to coach your sellers to not promote the property. They're not the they are not the um the licensed professional that should be talking about anything, mentioning much about the house, just really basic. This is the living room, this is a, a the kitchen, the dining room, the, the patio, end unit, things like that that are really obvious. They can tell that this is the kitchen that they're going into. Um, and just naturally walk through the house. I recommend holding the phone virtually 
as well as not using um, too many bells and whistles when it comes to like taking panoramic photos or stretching out the, the, um, the video footage because it can distort. So, and you also wanna make sure that you're shooting vertical for the correct orientation as well. Um, because then your phone is upright, your video is gonna be upright. Show a little bit more of this. Walking back in, into a large open kitchen. Does have a lot of natural light. There's another window there. Stainless steel appliances that stay with the property and a double sink. Let's walk upstairs here. And as you can see right here, we've got a little bridgeway upstairs. It's very So this is something that you can recommend that your sellers do. Send that tour over to you in WhatsApp or Drive or Dropbox or whatever you prefer. What we had one recommendation called uh, We Transfer as well. And what was the other one, Colleen, that we tried? I'm actually uh, going to show that. I, I just okay. mirrored my screen. Um, I'm going to show that real quick because I have been using that. I've, I've tested it out now for almost a week and I am loving it. And I found some new cool stuff in there uh, on Friday. So I'll actually show that. Okay. And then Colleen uploaded that video that her, um, let's say that this was her seller that made this video sent over to her in YouTube. So she's going to, I'm going to hand that off to you, uh, to you, Colleen, about creating the link and, um, and the, pro the platform that you've been using to send uh, photos and videos. Awesome. All right. Well, I am going to try to share my screen here. Um, can you see my phone screen there, Taylor? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Um, so as Taylor just mentioned, we've been uh, taking a look at this Axel app and it is a free app. It, I think it's really cool. I've been testing it out for uh, over a week and I did send it to a seller. I was able to uh, get the photos very, very easily. So I made a little real estate uh, folder on my phone and I go into this Axel. There's a little gear up here at the top. Um, and then I just simply scroll down and I invite them to Axel. So I'm inviting my seller. So it's very, very easy. I click invite. You can send via email, but really I want to send this right through um, at their messaging because I want it to show up as a text. So they simply click on it to download it. So I'm going to send via message. Then um, when they've downloaded the app, I just want to show you how easy this is. They click on the little plus here and it just says take a photo or video. That's literally all that they do and they can share that directly with me. So it's a nice, easy way for me to get that movie file. Uh, I think that's where sellers kind of struggle. As Taylor mentioned, they don't do this every day. So now they've got this movie file and they're like, oh, geez, how do I get it back to you? Um, so the nice thing is they can actually take a photo or video uh, right from their phone and they just allow me to see it. So it's really, really easy. Once the video is done, shows up right there and they can even send me a link or just share it directly with me. So it's really cool and it doesn't uh, require them trying to figure out how to get this big movie file to you. So what, I, was, the I, name I, of that? what was the name of that uh, app? Axel and it's a free app. As you can see, it's A-X-E-L. You should be able to see it on your screen right so now. Is that easier than that WhatsApp? I Now, Taylor has used WhatsApp quite a bit. Um, I've been kind of beta testing the Axel, and I know Taylor uh, has a little more familiarity with the WhatsApp. Taylor, does that look very similar to WhatsApp? I would say the big benefit of Axel is that if your, um, if your seller has never used any kind of uh, document sharing ever, this one is very easy um, because then they all they have to do is just simply download that app and and um, upload that movie and send it to you. But what I really like um, about this is it's you can just send it without having an account either. Right. So we have, a, we have somebody asked a question. They say I downloaded the WhatsApp, but do not see. Let me see here. Do not how, see. how to add the contacts. Um, 
in, I don't know about you ladies, but when I did the WhatsApp, it asked for permission um, to use my contacts. What are your thoughts? Yeah, all, all, all apps are going to usually do that. They're going to need permission for like mics and photos and, and contacts and everything. So if it pops up and asks for permission, you would say yes. If not, then you go into your settings. But the WhatsApp is just like any other app where you download it on your phone. The person that you're sharing with also has to do it. So when you have that the WhatsApp on your phone, um, there's the the way that you can you can do that is there's just like a little um like a pen in the top right corner and then that's where you can load your contacts you can create new groups so you can you know call this mr and mrs smith is the name of this group and then if they're a contact in your phone then you add them to the group and the the, the files that are shared between you and that group stay right between you and that group and you can have multiple groups within within this app so what i do for whatsapp is this is where i send um i stay in contact with you know my different relatives um where i they see stuff on social media but i can um you know send them more than what i would post or longer videos or or more fit photos so i share a lot with my sister-in-law she sends me pictures pictures and videos of my niece and my nephews um and we just kind of in in that group that we've set up i also have a group with um some of my family members and some of my friends that are all exclusive to that group so if it's just if it's just a contact thing um it's setting up that group and selecting the person in your contact list that's a part of that group and it works very similar in Axel. So we've given you two great options for apps. Um, uh, Dave is famous for saying, go and test them out though. Um, they're free apps. Again, you can download them, You know, practice sending uh, uh, it to your husband or your family member and let them see how easy it is. I always like to get you know, a few testimonials uh, before I start using it with clients. How easy was it for you? Um, and that way you have a little bit of knowledge of working the app as well. And you're not like down to the minute going, oh, geez, I got to figure out how to do this. I need to get these photos right now. So um, so Taylor uh, recommends um, the WhatsApp. I recommend that Axel app. I like that I can share Axel with one click and I like that everything comes right back to me. Um, and the seller, all they have to do is literally click on it. Uh, they don't need to uh, set up an account if you don't want them to, meaning they can literally just click on it and share information. That's kind of cool, too. So a lot of cool things there. Um, as Taylor mentioned, uh, she showed you how to go in and add those links uh, right to your listing. Um, I want to show you how you now can start promoting that property. So we have the single property website. So I'm going to go to my listing on Marsha here. Just we're going to keep it the same since that's the one that uh, Taylor just showed you a moment ago. We're going to open up that listing. On that listing, you're going to see those colorful quick action links. Taylor, can you see those okay? Am I seeing the right yeah. screen? Okay, Everything cool. Looks good. All right. Um, so you're going to see the single property website. So when you click on that single property website icon, it's going to take you into the way that you really want to promote uh, your listings, because obviously you're, you know, in this time where the seller is sending you that information, they're sending you the photos, they're sending you the videos. Well, that's going to put those unbranded tours that uh, Taylor showed you, the virtual tour and video tour, that's gonna be right on your single property website. And a lot of people will ask me, well, Colleen, why would you use that to promote? Why not just hit the share button on like Zillow or sh the share button on something else? Be very careful when you're sharing your listings because you're taking your great photos, all your hard work, you're taking the comments that you're writing. And a lot of times when you're sharing them on these third party sites, you're taking all your hard work and giving it to the person who just bought that zip code. So in this case, if I share the single property website, let's say on, uh, let's say I'm sharing it on social media. They're going to be able to see all the information. They're going to be able to see all of the photos. They're going to be able to see if there's an upcoming uh, open house. They're going to be able to go through all that property information. They're going to see my contact information, but it's only advertising me 
and my other listings, my other solds, my other pendings, and my other actives. I'm not competing with someone who just bought that zip code. So be careful when you're working so hard and putting these uh, together um, that you're making sure that you're getting the return on that. And can um, I jump in on that? I just want to make sure that everybody understands what Colleen just said does not mean that the um, listing will probably still be on Zillow because your broker uh, wanted it to be syndicated to Zillow. The listing will still be on Zillow. What she's talking about is when you, the listing agent, decide you want to share your listing on Facebook, for example, uh, you wouldn't want to do it from, even though it's already on Zillow, you don't want to do it from Zillow. You want to do it from your own single property website because it keeps the branding to you, the agent, the listing agent. It's all about you, the listing agent. I just want to make sure everybody understands those are two separate items. It does not mean that your uh, listing will not also be, it probably will also be on Zillow because your broker decided to syndicate it to uh, Zillow. Correct. So it's just if I'm going to share my hard work as an agent, I want to share it from somewhere that I'm getting the lead back. I'm not sharing it from a place that's going to give the lead to someone who just purchased the zip code. Yes, it will still be there, as Dave mentioned, but I want to make sure when I'm sharing it, the people are going to call me. They see my contact information. And if other people share it, it stays branded to me. So I'm getting those leads. Um, as Taylor mentioned, there are four different places for branding. Now, I did this one just before, um, as she mentioned before, the order to the shelter in place. It was like the day before, actually, I think. Uh, so when I go to virtual tour, um, I was able to put in a little bit of contact information. But also, there's two. Um, the video tour is my circle picks tour again. So if you don't have when the order is lifted and you can go out and you can actually go into properties again, um, the single property website always takes your branded tours first. So when you can go in and the shelter in place is over, if you grab your phone and I did that video, by the way, strictly from my phone, I walked through the uh, house as you saw, uh, Taylor showed you the video. I did it all with my phone and then you can do a branded and an unbranded tour when the order is lifted. Right now, because the sellers are sending it, we recommend that unbranded tour, put it in Paragon so that it can be disseminated uh, through the Collab Center and other places like that. But then the next question in this class always is, okay, Colleen, so a movie file got sent to me from my seller. How do I make it a link? So, you know, if you're using Axel, it'll send you the link where you can download the movie file. But how do you do that? So the next step is YouTube for me. I actually went in, I created a YouTube uh, channel. By the way, just ask for your first name, last name and email address and to agree you know, to the terms. And then once you do that, it will create a YouTube channel where you can actually um, make a link from your videos. So I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna actually walk you through it step by step. I click on this little camera icon. If you've never used YouTube before, it's easier than you would ever think. You click upload video. And really that's the hardest part. It's going to walk you through a little wizard that is going to allow you to create the link. It says, well, what do you want to turn into a link? So all you're going to do is click select a file or you could drag and drop one right on there. So I'm just going to select a file right from my desktop. I created, uh, we'll use Joe's mama here, created this video file. Um, and so all I'm doing is I'm literally uploading it and you can see it's already creating the link for me. The simple steps are three simple steps across the top. You're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this 123 Main Street. <laughs> I am then I can put in a description. You can see it's uploading that video file. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And it's going to ask me, is this made for kids or not? Really why it's asking you this is it wants to know YouTube has a kid channel as well. My son, who's seven, happens to love it, um, where he can watch little video clips made by other kids and it's kid-friendly content. So I'm gonna say, no, I don't want this on the kid channel. I want this to just go on the traditional YouTube. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. You can add um, cards or an end screen, and then it's going to finish processing your video once you hit next. 
It will ask you, do you want it to be private? Do you want it to be unlisted or public? In this case, I'm just going to make it public and publish. That's it. Now I'm going to copy that link. Here's the link right here. And I can I could actually send it out uh, onto social media right from here. Or I could copy this link, which is what I'm going to put into Paragon. So a lot of people are um, asking questions about showing time. So, you know, what well, do we do? We why do we even need showing time? People can't go into the properties right now. Well, that's true, but I still want to track who has interest in the property. Um, I still want to talk to buyers agents. And um, this is usually about when someone says, well, how are people writing purchase agreements? And I will tell you myself, I've received two purchase agreements now that have been subject to the buyer being able to walk through the property uh, when the governor governor's order is lifted. And so uh, basically they're written in such a way that says that the buyer after the governor's order is lifted will walk through within seven days. And it's basically like a contingency on that happening. Um, the reason that we're seeing so many of those, because I know a lot of people are like, well, I've never done that before. And that's okay, we're in a changing market. We're doing things different. But the reason that we're seeing so many of those is because there's such a low amount of inventory right now. And so I have personally been working with some buyers who are so frustrated that they could not find a home. When they do see something go on the market, they want to jump on it right away. And um, so don't be afraid to, uh, you know, if your buyers see something, don't be afraid to check with your broker on the language uh, and to write it subject to uh, the governor's order being lifted and the buyer getting to walk through the property and that way your buyer doesn't lose out on a home all right so the next thing i want to do is i'm going to jump into showing time and i'm going to show you a way that you can work with other buyers agents answer questions talk to them and host times that you could be available to speak with them about the home nobody is going to know the home better than you and the seller so i have the seller send me um, that video file and photos ahead of time. And that way, when I'm talking to these agents, I have all that information right in front of me. So let me kind of show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit here. And I'm gonna say, I want to schedule a new sh a, a time. I'm gonna show you what it looks like, because maybe I only wanna be available from 12 to three every day, or maybe I wanna be just, maybe I just wanna make it a half hour. Maybe I want it to be from, uh, 12 to 2 or maybe I just want it to be from 12 to 12:30. and what I generally will do is I will set apart that time and I will set up a zoom call now by the way zoom has uh, really affordable plans but they also have free plans so if you use the free plan you want to keep your time frame to about 30 minutes because with the free plan that they offer um, you can do exactly this you just want to keep it underneath the 40 minute mark because it literally at 40 minutes the call ends so i would if i was using the free account i would probably do 12 to 12 30 where i'm going to allow people to schedule a showing on this property a virtual showing but basically it's going to send them the zoom phone number so that i now can talk to that other buyer's agent about the property answer any questions that they may have in addition to that the reason i'm doing that is because I also want to keep track of who has interest in the property. Let's say I reduce this $10,000. I want to be able to send those notifications out. I want to be able to, you know, talk to them, you know, a week from now and see if their buyer is still interested. I want to keep, you know, knowing what's going on, who's interested in that property, and I want to keep track of it. And the best way to do that is through showing time. Now, the, the question that usually comes up here is, well, the showing time link is gone. Well, yes, it has. it's not on each individual listing, but you still can get to showing time right through the app or right through the resources. So if you go to resources, you still can get into showing time. Um, what you want to do to set your properties up for this so you can schedule those times is you want to go into your listings. And I changed mine to a go and show because what I want to do is I want to have immediately when they request it, I want them to send out the Zoom information for that time. So I've gone down here and I've blocked out the times so that I'm only, you know, got that half hour or maybe hour time frame. 
I'm going to where it says access details. Now, normally this is where I would be putting in my lockbox. So I would have my lockbox combination in here. But this time I'm changing it from lockbox to other. Now I want to put in that it's a virtual property showing. I want to put in my time and my Zoom call phone number. So I would do something like, again, I'm going to reference the time. So I'm going to put 2 p.m. Again, they'll only be able to schedule on that time frame. And then I'm going to put in my Zoom call instructions. And then I'm going to hit the save changes. Now when they request an appointment, it's going to immediately send out that Zoom call link. They can click right on it and be connected. So I want to show you uh, two agents who recently did this. Matter of fact, they let us tag along with them last week. Um, and they discussed a property coming to the market. And so I'm going to take you there. Hold on just one moment so you can actually see it. And um, you can actually hear the two agents answering questions like, um, you know, that room looks really large. Um, and they're going through the actual a home and then the agent who's one of our great trainers at my real source also says hey let me switch over to home snap because what i want to show you next is the property disclosures and i want to um, also show you the neighborhood which i thought was really brilliant that she flipped right into home snap so i'm just going to show you this real quick it's just a small video and i'll fast forward through it but just so you get the idea in this time of working remotely wouldn't it be fast great? forward the instructions here? We'll get right into what they did. And I, uh, we have this uh, link, by the way, uh, under our recorded webinars. It's also on our YouTube channel. So if you want to see step by step what I just showed you, how to set these things up, because I know we're throwing a lot at you. Um, it's all recorded there for you. We're going to show you how to get there. But I do want to just take you into the tour that these two um, agents went into. Hi, Ed. Thanks for taking some time with me to take a virtual tour of my client's home. Um, she had a beautiful colonial with a attached garage. She uh, took a video virtual tour for us, so I'm going to take you a walkthrough. And if, if you have any questions, I'll just let me know. So i walk through our front door, newer built home. You will notice we've got uh, newer windows as we walk through, keyless entry. To the left, we have a nice formal dining room, also newer windows, also newer flooring freshly painted, got a nice open foyer, and if you look to the right, I've got a living room with also newer flooring, newer windows. It looks like the whole house has been updated. Do you know of any of the updates at all? Yeah, actually everything has been updated within the last couple of years. Windows were about five years. So they're able to literally discuss the property as they're going through. But the point I want to I want to make is on a Zoom call right from your phone. So, of course, she's showing this, um, but she then flips over to HomeSnap for some additional detail, which I thought was really smart of her. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this. She shares her screen. I've got my documents on home snap. I can also take you through a walk on the street view. So let's take a look at the documents first. And here's both the documents. And I can send these over to you. You can also access them yourself on home snap. So seller's disclosure and everything is in there for you. If there's any questions at all, please let me know. And let's take a look at the street view. We can actually take a look up, uh, at the house itself and kind of walk through without actually you know, being outside. So this is the street. Uh, it is a nice quiet area. It does that end here. Now what's important to note here and what makes this kind of, I think really cool is Lisa was at home on her couch. Lisa was not on the street. She literally went into HomeSnap, which has the street view, and she's literally uh, walking this agent around the neighborhood by simply moving her phone from her couch, which I thought was really cool. It was very ingenious. So good job, Lisa. Uh, we've gotten a whole lot of people sending us great testimonials. Um, they've been sending us ideas. And uh, matter of fact, on next week's Mixing It Up, uh, uh, which is a class we hold on Thursday, it's a 45-minute class, 
we've got some people who went above and beyond and we're doing virtual open houses and we're doing virtual property showings, tips and tricks that they had, things that they found out. So if you join us uh, next Thursday at 10 a.m., uh, we're going to have some people talking about how they took the class, what they learned, what they tried, and the successes they had from it, which I, I think is really going to be a whole lot of fun. Taylor and I uh, host that every week, um, and we've gotten just a, a ton of great feedback on that. All right, so we, uh, the takeaway here is you want to be sure that you're still scheduling times where buyers can come in, they can ask you questions. As Taylor mentioned, make sure that you are getting the permission uh, with that one page, very simple form. As you can see, I've put it right in my uh, listing uh, package and transaction desk. You can also find it under MLS documents. Make sure you've got those unbranded links in Paragon that the uh, links from uh, either YouTube or links that that homeowner has sent you. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Taylor, who's going to talk about setting up uh, virtual open houses. And um, that is a, another just fantastic idea, whether you're doing it to uh, bring in new buyers or you're doing it, scheduling it through Paragon for buyers agents to talk about that. So there's a whole bunch of great avenues there. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Taylor. All righty. All right, so Colleen showed you guys um, the live running, setting a, a Zoom live stream link up and you can invite people to that to participate. So how, how can you promote that? Um, so one way that you can promote that is actually through social media and using Facebook. If you go on to your personal Facebook or you switch over to a business page that you manage, you can actually create an event and put that live stream in the event. So you can promote it for a few days, get as many eyeballs as you can on the property, um, simply hit create event. You can upload the primary photo of the home. The event name should definitely be clear as to what it is. So virtual open house hosted by, because the property is gonna be in there. <clears throat> you can add a link right here to wherever you would like, the address and a description, the date that you want to have the open house, as well as add a little schedule to the open house. I wanna show you a sample one that I already have made so you'll see how I use this. And then there's an option to do co-hosts as well. <clears throat> so here's one of the open houses that I did on April 4th was labeled Virtual Open House by Taylor Fidoa. Um, I have the date, the address, and a little description. So I created this event on Facebook a few days before the actual scheduled open house. I recommend doing it on your Facebook business page because if you do it on your Facebook business page, you can then reshare it to your personal page, invite people, that you um, know on your personal page to it. You can have it on your business page to promote to everybody who follows you on your business page and boost and promote from there. Um, then you'll wanna write a little description. What is a virtual open house? What can they expect? So did you know you can still tour new listings virtually as they hit the market, but now in the comfort of your own home? Join us for a live virtual open house because we are excited to share with you this beautiful four bedroom craftsman style home right in the heart of Romeo, Michigan. Gorgeous landscaping and brand new interior. In my schedule, I added a welcome and an intro of what the open house is gonna be. I have my live walkthrough that I'm gonna post. And I have a discussion of a Q and A with after, um, with the agent so they can have an idea of what they can expect. Those couple days before the um, actual open house, you can do little polls talking about the, the home or just the industry, what kind of questions maybe they're gonna have, what they're looking for in a home, are they excited? Maybe a couple little teaser photos even. Um, you're welcome to even go live and kind of talk to people about what is going to come at this virtual open house 
And from there, what Colleen um, discovered worked really well is using the Zoom um, live stream. And having that live stream pasted in here when it's time to join, have everybody who has been promoted to and participating in the um, events, click on that live stream, they can join. What's really nice about Zoom is it has, um, it's called a, a holding room or something. What was it called? So you can actually approve who gets into it. Waiting room. Um, a waiting room, that's what it was. A waiting room so that they can, uh, you can approve who gets into it and have that um, seller share that pre-recording of Zoom of the seller walking through and you live can then um, ask them questions, talk about the property, do that Q&A um, all right there within Zoom, but using the virtual open house event on Facebook to promote it one step further. <clears throat> You're also able to go into your um, properties and actually schedule these, um, these as a live stream. Uh, Colleen, do you mind, can I hand this back off to you Real quick, I um, to show the live stream and open house real quick for me. Absolutely, absolutely. I will steal this back here. All okay, right, thank you. No problem. Okay, so uh, yes, yeah, so as Taylor just mentioned, uh, you can schedule. We're going to go back to our Marsha. One other thing uh, before we get into there, um, Collab Center also just added that seller side activity. Um, it's not a bad idea to set your sellers up with that sell side activity in Collab Center so they can see their competition. Um, so as you can see right here, I've got a seller. I set them up in here because remember, they can't go look at their competition right now. They can't get in their car and drive two neighborhoods over to see what they're competing with. So it's a great idea to set them up as sellers in the Collab Center um, so that they can see if people reduce their price, they can see other competition that they have. So uh, it's a good idea to do that. Okay, so this little um, uh, binocular looking icon, that tells me that there is an open house on this property. So let me show you how to add that. So I'm gonna go to maintain listing. I am going to open this up and I'm going to add an open house. So I'm gonna click add new and you'll notice that the only option for open house is now live streaming because obviously we don't want anyone doing an open house at the actual property. I'm going to do this from my couch. I'm going to actually paste the URL um, that they can, I can be reached at that time. I'm gonna put some comments in explaining and as you can see, I've got one set up right here. So from two to four, I'm doing a live streaming open house. And again, that appears not only on the listings um, so that agents now can reach out and ask their questions in that open house. Um, but remember that open house is going to show up on my uh, list track, my single property website um, where I'm promoting that. So you want to make sure you're adding your open houses right into your listings um, so people know when you're hosting them. Um, one other thing, since I've got you here before I give it back to Taylor, um, is uh, if you are hosting Zoom calls, don't be afraid to think out of the box and show them things like the neighborhoods. Um, so I'm going to show you a real quick, really good example of how to do this is if you share your screen in Zoom. Let's say uh, this Marsha property we've been using today happens to be located in New Baltimore. So maybe I want to show um, uh, Walter and Mary Burke Park. I want to show them, I want to sell the lifestyle because this particular uh, area that I'm talking about, um, it's, it's all about the lifestyle. It's very close to the water. So I would probably want to show them things like uh, maybe where it's located in proximity to the water. But then there is this little Google man over here to the right. Dave, are you seeing my screen? Yeah. Okay. You're going to grab this little Google man over here to the right. And maybe I want to showcase the waterfront because this actually is very close. This is actually the pier 
Um, you can walk down the pier. You can showcase the beach. I can do a 360 view showing the cute little downtown. Um, so don't be afraid to also showcase things like the area. Um, I know it's a little bit harder to sell a house when you can't drive to that particular home. But if I go just um, beyond where that beach is, I'm gonna just kind of take you on a little tour. I can actually do this right on a Zoom call and we can be looking at the cute little downtown. I could be looking at, uh, this happens to be Front Street. So that beach that we just looked at, that pier is right here. There's some children's play equipment here. Maybe I wanna show them the cute little downtown of New Baltimore. So I can actually take them on the tour right from here. Um, so, you know, we've gotta be a little more creative. Yes, is it as easy? No, but hopefully with the tips and tricks that we're passing along today, um, you can use some of these tours um, to show them the neighborhood since we can't get in our car and drive there right now. Can I jump in? I Please. just wanna uh, reiterate what you already said is make sure you schedule these virtual open houses in Paragon, as the real big uh, thing is, not only does it uh, show up to everybody in the MLS and through the uh, Collab Center and places like that, but it also goes on as a big banner on the single property website. So make sure you uh, use that. Uh, another thing is hot off the press, just got it just now, uh, that showing time will have similar to what we just saw in. Uh, Paragon, where you can schedule it as a virtual uh, open house, uh, there'll be you'll be able to schedule it as a uh, virtual showing without having to do the steps that uh, Colleen showed you. Right now, you have to click other and and do that, uh, add it yourself. Uh, the, there'll be the ability to do a virtual showing, and that starting out because of the governor's order, that will be the only thing that you'll be able to do, but down the road, you'll also be able to do uh, combinations of uh, either virtual showings and in-person showings, or only in-person showings, or both. You'll, you'll be able to mix and match in the future once the governor's order is uh, released. So, but uh, that's coming next week. It looks like uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. So we'll get more information out about that. So uh, that's hot off the press, just received that just now. All right, that's up to the minute stuff. Thanks, Dave. All right, Taylor, is there anything I forgot? Uh, anything you wanna just elaborate on? Just tips that maybe I wanted to, to throw in. Thank you for, um, thank you for hand, letting me hand that off to you. My, uh, my three-year-old woke up from her nap a, a good hour earlier than I thought she was going to. So. No problem. That We're all doing the same thing. So I have a seven-year-old who bursts in occasionally as well. So we we'll totally get it. Yeah. So I, I panicked a little bit. I could, I uh, had to had to go distract her for a few. Um, but a couple of things that I just wanted to throw out there is, you know, Facebook Live is a good way to kind of pre-promote. Zoom is a wonderful platform. We've been using it for about a year and a half just internally at the office here. Um, super easy, user friendly. So just test it out before you do any of this. Go ahead and create a, a, a pretend event in Facebook, um, just even on your personal page if that's where you feel comfortable. Invite a friend or your spouse and just do a quick run through and a, a, um, a Zoom link and do all that. There's different levels to Zoom. So there's a free account and there's the paid for uh, paid accounts. They're between the paid is 15 to 20 dollars depending on what you opt in for um, a month and the free allows is free of course but it allows up to 40 minutes of a live stream so there's um, a lot of options for you in terms of, of what we talked about but there's also FaceTiming there's also Google Hangouts if you've never used Google Hangouts they're they're um, I wouldn't say it's as easy as Zoom, in my opinion, but I've they're they're pretty straightforward as well. Um, Skype is a really popular one, but I, you know, from our experience, Zoom has been working out really well, and a lot of corporations you can see them using it, and um, internally here for us, Colleen's been doing the virtual uh, open house herself. It worked out really well, so 
Um, it's just kind of testing it and taking what our recommendations and really trying it out in between you know you and one person that you trust or a couple of people you trust so that you have that confidence and have that confidence to communicate that with the seller. Um, a, a popular question too that we get is how long should my tours be? Now there's kind of a rule in terms of like videos and attention span. So like pre-recorded tours, depending on the size of the house, you know, three minutes is kind of that sweet spot. But if you got a five bedroom house with a lot of things to show, of course it, it can be longer. Um, and, but you know, three, three, four minutes is really kind of where you want to try to, to fall just to get their attention. Um, and then do that, that open house. Um, and then you did mention Andrew is going to be on with us at Mixing It Up next week, Colleen, too? Uh, both Andrew and Kathleen will, uh, Kathleen uh, Gardner has also uh, been kind enough to uh, join us and she has actually been doing a lot of virtual open houses. Um, and she has three properties uh, now under contract since the governor's order went into place. Um, I spent a lot of time talking to her today and she had some great time saving tips and techniques, some of the things that are working for uh, her. So um, Andrew's going to be kind enough to show us some ideas for taking those seller videos and making that easy uh, and making that work a little bit more efficiently. And then Kathleen's going to tell us some of the success stories that she's had, too. So it's going to be kind of like a, a guest show next week. Yeah, so it's a good testimonial as well as somebody who can kind of uh, up your your video tour game just yes. from from the ease of your phone is right i think that's what he's going to be covering is some apps on your phone so you don't have to use anything too fancy or difficult well i was we were so lucky to find him because he's been an agent for the last few years but he also has an education background and his background is actually setting up um video and setting up uh, ipads for kids schools and so he knows all the cool apps and the tips and tricks and uh so i was really amazed he's actually been helping uh, a lot of people in his own office um when they didn't know what to do with the seller photos and the so, uh, seller videos he said you know what i got this app this app and this app and let me show you and so it's been really uh, great hearing all the people coming together and helping each other um you know in this time so i thought he would be a great guest for our show yeah that's awesome i'm excited so that'll be promoted here soon um mixing it up for next thursday at 10 a.m um so go ahead and when you see that go out go ahead and sign up for that and we'll um it's about a 45 minute show class slash class um we give away prizes and all of that so um any questions that you guys have now's the time to ask because we're going to be wrapping up and then if you are uh, good, then make sure you download the handout that was provided to you to use um, for your seller. And these are recorded and posted on our recorded webinars, which is under resources. Colleen's got it right there, recorded webinars. And then any other classes that we have scheduled are under education right there as well, class registration. Debbie, our director of education, she's working really hard to get classes um, based on demand and not too far out. So if there's a class that you would like to see added to the schedule, please let us know. Um, but we have like, you know, one to two weeks out in classes at max, just based on how quickly things are changing and, the, um, and what most people have questions on right now. So check that out, check out our class schedule, check out the webinars. Um, I'd like to just add something that, you know, it's it's great that uh, we've got these uh, webinars recorded. I would just be careful that things are changing so quickly that uh, next week I would anticipate there'll be changes to the restrictions in the governor's order going forward, as well as there's going to be big changes in how we uh, work with showing time. So there's going to be lots of things I anticipate changing next week, which obviously then we have to work to get those incorporated in these webinars, but then that makes the old recorded webinars slightly out of uh, date. That's job security for us, Taylor. Just want you to know. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, Since so it's changing, you're still going to want to participate as, <laughs> as you can live because everything is changing, of course. But um, mm -hmm. what we have up there is is you know overview of a lot of the stuff we've talked about. Hey guys, Debbie. Uh, Debbie said thanks for the mention. She's working on next week now, and as we're doing this, I got an email for a class we might do in May. Um, she said, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel too. And like yes. us on Facebook. I was Facebook. just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, definitely Facebook too, where you see a lot of things going on that we're um, classes and um, announcements and stuff to just kind of keep you in the loop a little. Uh, if you're on Facebook, might as well like us if you don't already so that you get those um, alerts. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of your day. And hope and to see you. We have somebody wants to know what's the name of the YouTube. How do they get to our YouTube channel? I my, it's like my mind was going there. Uh, it is uh, here is our YouTube channel, and it is My Real Source Media. So as you can see right there, it's My Real Source Media, and you can actually subscribe right to our channel. Can they get to that from somewhere inside Paragon? Under res uh, under resources, I think. Is that where it takes them? I think that is where it takes them right now. Let's let me look. Right now, Hold yeah, on. I don't know the actual that. official answer, but I will click there and see. But on our homepage too. Colleen, yes. If you just want to show them our homepage. We have all of well, our social media you, up here at the bottom. Show them how you got there. So if you, you go to Paragon and you go to resources and you go to our recorded webinars, it's gonna take you directly to the My Real Source uh, Media page. And then you want to remember to subscribe. I'm already subscribed, so the little button is not there for me to show you, but you wanna make sure that you do that. And then show them the homepage to Colleen and, um, and Paragon. The homepage. All of our social media is right there up at the top where um, of the homepage. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and YouTube, as well as our website. All right there. Um, if you have a custom homepage there, you can switch between board and MLS, and that's where our homepage is versus your custom one. Yeah, you might see your office page there, as I do. So you want to click on board, MLS, or office. And everything that we have up online is right up there at the top. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, so much for attending today. And um, any feedback you have, please send to us. And we look forward to having you on more classes. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Chris, for manning all those questions. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. It was kind of late today, but glad we had a few.
don't seem to care. 